this episode is going to give you three guidelines to follow when you're seeking to improve the way your horse moves. I'll talk about uh, the difference between healthy biomechanics and the two different kinds of unhealthy biomechanics. I'm also going to share a concept that's going to help you spend more time enjoying what you're doing with your horse and less time searching for it. The concepts I'm going to talk about are going to help you get the most out of any exercise that you do. So here we go. Episode three, three guidelines for improving how your horse moves. Hi, I'm Karen Rolfe and welcome to Horse Training in Harmony. This podcast is about you making progress with your horse in a way that you both can love. It's about learning how to move and be in harmony. Because yes, you really can develop a horse to be both athletic and happy. When we show up as our best selves for our horses, our horses will show up for us. So let's get started. Three guidelines for improving how your horse moves. This is actually the third attempt at recording this podcast because my adorable little Remy uh, seemed to want to have little barking fits every time I started to hit record. So we're going to do our best here to keep this little guy happy, <laughs> hopefully quiet. <laughs> when, when students want to improve their horse's way of moving or biomechanics, uh, they're often told uh, to think about shape right? To think about the position of the head and neck, the degree of tracking up angles in the hip versus the shoulder and things like that. So I think we've all, you know, in trying to educate ourselves, we'll look in books and, and often there's diagrams showing, you know, what the perfect shape is. And, you know, those, that sort of information definitely is important. But the trouble is that most of our horses don't look like the ones in the book. Confirmation is different. Every horse is an individual. So we need to find a way of improving our horse's way of moving that really speaks to the individual horse in front of us and that um, and to have exercises and concepts that will help any horse and not just try to create the perfect picture, but try to help each horse be the best that they can be. So when we focus on just shape alone, without paying attention to the process or the entire dynamic of movement, um, it can actually end up causing more harm than good. You know, sometimes we're trying to fit square pegs into round holes. A lot of times also techniques involve becoming stronger, going to the gym, or you put side reins or draw reins or pessoas or any kind of piece of equipment on, and you end up just strengthening the, a dynamic of brace. Um, and you strengthen, you know, when you're drilling and drilling and drilling, trying to hopefully achieve something, then you're actually strengthening all the muscles of not quite there yet. <laughs> You know, you're strengthening muscles of trying to learn instead of being a little bit more artful in the training to try to get there quicker to set up the dynamic and the posture and the set of circumstances so that your horse has the correct way of moving and then strengthening that beautiful dynamic um, that you're trying to achieve. Creating healthy biomechanics is really a holistic endeavor. It's not just about the shape and the tracking up and the angles of this part of the body versus the other. We can't take the bio part out of biomechanics. We have to look at the whole horse. And when we think of way of moving and we think about posture, you know, those two things are actually very closely related. One affects the other. So three things to remember about the way your horse moves. Number one, everything affects posture. 
Number two, there are healthy and unhealthy ways of moving slash posture. And number three is you and your horse can change and can choose. So what do I mean by those things? Number one, everything affects posture. So posture is a result of many things. Mental and emotional states affect posture. Whether you're in pain or not affects posture. Your general energy level or level of exhaustion or fatigue affects posture. So think about how you're sitting if you're bored to death. (laughs) Think about your posture if you're going to do something that you're dreading doing. You know, how do you hold yourself when you walk in, you know, to go get that root canal versus, you know, how would you be walking and moving if I told you like, I just bought you a new horse and it's back in your barn. Want to go see? (laughs) So, you know, definitely mental state affects posture, definitely level of energy. You know, the, there's a long list of things that could affect posture, the, the equipment, the tack, the, the shoes, the feet, the terrain that you're on. Those are all influences. Uh, so the good news of that is it means that if you want to change your horse's posture, it's not just about more inside leg to outside rein. (laughs) And often when we think about dressage or we think about making our horses rounder or more engaged, it's like, okay, what aids do I need to put on? And you can have, I've seen big effects happen with horses simply by changing their nutrition or changing the, the amount of turnout they get or changing the horse that they're turned out with or just the way I play with them. So there's a video in my video classroom. It's called Changing Posture Through State of Mind. And I show playing with a horse online. I just send it out with one kind of energy in my body. And then I play with it a little bit differently. And the whole thing transforms. So I guess the the... Bad news is everything affects posture, but the good news is everything affects posture. So when you're wanting to to make a big improvement on horse's posture, there's lots of doorways into that. And there's lots of things that you can look at. And sometimes every little bit makes a difference. Even if you don't find the like core breakthrough moment or thing that's going to transform everything, you can do a little bit of an improvement here, a little bit of an improvement there. And those can really all add up to create a better movement dynamic. Okay, number two, there are healthy and unhealthy ways of moving. So the, let's see, I'll start with unhealthy first. A lot of times you'll find me doing this if I'm trying to wrap my head around a concept, I'll often look at the opposite of what I want first because the reality is sometimes it's sometimes it's easier to imagine when stuff doesn't work because that's what we have more experience with. So let's look at unhealthy posture first. So there's active and inactive unhealthy biomechanics. So don't go Googling that. Well, if you do Google it, I'll probably come up because I haven't really heard this explained or described like this anywhere else. Um, but active unhealthy posture happens when there's some sort of active brace, active contraction, active uh, conflict between rider and horse or horse and environment. Uh, So you can maybe, the the cartoon of that might be um, uh, the horse that's like scared and the tail is up and flagging and the neck is up and everything's just really tight, right? It also could be Uh, a horse ridden in collection where the rider is actively pulling and actively driving at the same time. And you get that, you guys know what I mean. You get the head short, neck tight, active. There's, There's something actively going wrong. They're putting effort into it. (laughs) 
So it's um, active contraction of the top line from anxiousness or restrictive riding. Now, it also could be, because every horse reacts differently, sometimes when horses are um, in an actively conflicting circumstance, they kind of freeze and brace. So maybe they're not freaking out, but it's still that um, tension. There's like extra tension in the body. Sometimes it shows up as like exploding and freaking out. And sometimes it shows up as just kind of stuck. Inactive unhealthy posture is more related to some sort of version of plopping around. Now I find um, the people who are attracted to my work tend to be very heart-centered people. So they're they're people who maybe already know from the beginning that they prioritize partnership with their horse. Um, the other group of people I get are people who are very um, progress driven and they've met a horse that they're stuck. Like this horse isn't fitting in my system. I need new ideas. Um, but the, the people who are definitely partnership based, something I often run into is there, they get afraid to work their horse too hard, right? So they're like, I don't want to, I don't want to work them too hard. I don't want to stress them out. And so that they sometimes overshoot the target in the other direction. And they're like, I don't want to touch them. I don't want to push them. I don't want to make them sweat. <laughs> um, and it's out of a spirit of partnership. But what I see is that there's, it can be just as detrimental to a horse to be just plopping around on the forehand um, because they're not being put in any kind of athletic state. And something that you guys might be able to relate to um, is this. So here's something I experience. I can work all day outside with my horses. I can, you know, ride six horses, play with some online, throw a couple hay bales, you know, here or there, lift some bags of grain, uh, do stuff like that. And I come in at the end of the day and I might feel tired, but I feel good. You know, I'm like, Ooh, I feel that muscle or I just, I, you know, it's that kind of that good, that good tired feeling like you used yourself. But if I've been on uh, a trip or vacation and I spend some time walking through a museum or maybe it's, you know, I try to avoid the mall at all costs, but you know, I can remember times that I've walked slowly through a mall and you're walking on, you know, cement floors very slowly all day. And I don't know about you, but my body is killing me at the end of the day. My feet hurt, my back hurts. And I I'll tell myself like I didn't do anything. That is inactive unhealthy biomechanics. So I think that gives you a picture of both of those things. So what is healthy? Healthy is the opposite of that. So what's the common theme when we picture healthy biomechanics? There's, there's an energy, right? There's some sort of enlivening athletic energy moving through the horse's body. There's this feeling that it's a stream of energy. There's no contraction and conflict. Um, so there's a, a stretchableness. And this stretchableness, I think, is the main key. That's the difference between a, a perfectly clean Grand Prix test where you go, wow, that was amazing. And a Grand Prix test that's clean, and you're like, I don't even want to watch. And even more than that, it's the difference between watching a horse do a clean Grand Prix test, but you kind of like wince and, and you're like, that doesn't look like any fun. Or seeing a horse just simply trot by, like working trot rising with his rider and you're like, takes your breath away. So what we're seeing when we see healthy biomechanics is that enlivened energy with a degree of calmness to it and a balance such that the top line is free to be used for what a top line is meant to be used for or what a what their backs are meant to be used used for which is movement right and a healthy biomechanic 
the back muscles on either side of the spine alternately contract and relax. The same way if you walked around uh, in a you know nice, free, enlivened, energetic way and you had your hands on your back, you'll feel your lower back muscles contract and relax, contract and relax. But if you've ever had back pain or if you're limping or if you're tight for some reason and you put your hands on your back and walk around, you'll feel tight, 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 right? It's that stiffness. So when horses are not balanced over their legs or they're experiencing contraction, their backs lock up. It's just tight. I mean, there's still some movement, but it, it's reflected in their gates because their backs are tight, so their legs can't swing as much. So when a horse is balanced over their legs, there's, and they have this stretchable quality, this seeking for to the contact, and that seeking is a result of their balance and their trust and their calmness and their state of mind, then what happens is the ligament systems come into play, the nuchal ligament, and they're, they're suspended by their ligament system, and then their back muscles are free to go. So it's that stretchy quality, that elastic quality that we're seeing that makes things beautiful. And that can show up in collection. That's the challenge. That's the art. That's the skill. How do I keep that swinginess even in collection? Um, and it can show up in working gates. It can show up in a stretch. Okay, so number three that you and your horse can change and choose. This is where um, I really tempt riders to not so much compare their horse to another horse. I mean, we can do that only if it creates inspiration and it creates a vision for where we want to go. But you can have um, a very ordinary horse who maybe was born a, a six mover. But if you ride that horse in a healthy way, you can get scores that are above six. You can get sevens and eights because a six mover with an average confirmation who is supple and balanced and aligned and free in their movement can be achieving all of the object of dressage and have clean tests. And maybe they'll get you know, they can get a 70%. You might have a horse who's born a super athlete, 10 on the walk, 10 on the trot, 10 on the canter. And that horse could be ridden in unhealthy biomechanics, in contraction, and feel like not that inspired. And he can get a 70. <laughs> but he just went down, <laughs> right? So we want to be really careful, you know, for me, I, I want to see my comparison is take the horse you had yesterday and the horse you have today and train him today so he's better tomorrow. And as long as I feel like my individual horse is becoming freer, more balanced, more aligned, more cooperative, in better communication, then I'm being successful. But if you take a average confirmation six moving horse and compare it to the one who was born at 10, you're, it's going to be hard not to be disappointed. And that, does, that doesn't need to be, right? So we want to really focus our attention on um, correctness in, in a way that it inspires us, gives us a vision, and has a sense of where we want to go. But the really important thing is to notice your own horse and notice these qualities within it. Because you'd be amazed at how a horse can transform when you transform the trust, the cooperation, the communication, and the movement dynamic. And you create that st stretchable, free moving um, scenario. And a com confirmation can look really different. I mean, of course, the leg bones aren't going to change length. But remember, the shoulders are not attached to the horse by any joint. They don't have a collarbone. So the way that they, a horse holds his torso within his shoulder blades can have a huge effect on, on the balance of the horse and how they're moving and able to move those, the front end out of the way and allow those hind legs to engage. 
Now, if you look at, go to my blog, there's a blog by the same title as this podcast, and there's some images um, in that, inside that blog of some now, you know, then and now pictures of some of my horses, and some of them you won't even believe it's the same horse. So how do we do it? How do we get from unhealthy to healthy movement dynamics? So like I said before, you know, there's good news and bad news. The good news is starting anywhere can help, right? So look at nutrition, look at your partnership with them, look at their, um, their lifestyle. Are they in a stall or are they out having fun and moving around? Um, and, you know, so there's sort of lifestyle changes, management changes. And then of course there's exercises. But I thought instead of giving you exercises because a specific exercise for one horse might be completely the wrong one for another horse. I always like to go big first. Like let's start with the generalities that I know are going to help everybody. And these three guidelines I'm about to give you can be, can help you if, even if you have a random exercise, if you do it following these guidelines, you're going to get maximum benefit from it. But if you had even the perfectly prescribed exercise that's exactly correct to do physical therapy for your horse, if you don't follow these guidelines, that exercise is not going to work. So that's why I decided to talk about these guidelines. I always like to stay big picture first and then narrow it down. So number one guideline is don't force it. Think about the word unhealthy. Unhealthy equals disease, dis-ease. So if it makes sense that unhealthy is dis-ease, then it makes sense that healthy means with ease. So again, that healthy dynamic, when the horse is balanced and trusting, that place should feel good even to the horse. It's a it's a place that shouldn't require effort to hold it together. Think of the leaning tower of Pisa. When, it's, when it was leaning, they had to have huge cables holding it up, right? They had to have, the, the riding analogy was like, they had to keep a contact and keep your leg on. They had to hold it together. Side reins, martingales, spurs, stuff like that. But when something's balanced, you don't have to hold it up with braces. So the same thing with our horse. Don't force it. If you're forcing it, for you know, and sometimes you have to help a horse through a moment. Like, come on, you can do this. But I mean, like holding it together. You guys know what I mean. Keep that leg on. Don't let them do this. Don't let them quit. Don't let them run off. Don't let them, that kind of stuff. If you're doing that, you can't get to healthy biomechanics. By definition, it will be without ease. It will be dis-ease, which means it's unhealthy. So we have to, you're going to get maximum benefit from any exercise if your horse is willingly participating in it with a body free of brace. So educate your horse, figure out why you're having to force it and figure out what does he need to understand and then take your aids away, find a neutral. If it falls apart when you go to neutral, then great. Now you know what you have to continue to educate your horse with. So don't force it. Number two, listen to your horse. You, you need to let your horse tell you when he feels balanced and trusting. So like I said a second ago, it should feel good to your horse. Balance and trust feels good. This moment leaves clues. So the signs that he is in a scenario where he feels like he can let go of his top line, that's the clues are he's more rhythmic, deeper, more regular breathing, moving more freely, a little scopier in their strides, um, offering to stretch, has that desire to stretch and fill up the contact, things like that, right? So look for the signs. When does your horse become a little more rhythmic? When does he start breathing a little deeper and more rhythmically? When does he start covering more ground or whatever it is that the adjectives that you're looking for 
you got to listen to your horse, right? So, so many times I've seen students be in a situation where um, they're, they're following the directions of their trainer. The trainer says, good, but it doesn't feel good. Now they're learning to be praised for lack of harmony. And so when I teach students, my first concern is always, how does it feel to you? How does it feel between you and your horse? Are you feeling it? It doesn't matter what it looks like to me. So when I think it looks good or not good, I will refrain from telling my student that until I know that they know it feels like the, the horse and they are together. That's a whole other podcast. Okay. So listening to your horse, making sure you can feel it. You just have to trust that you can feel it. So number three, the third guideline is to spend more time enjoying it and less time searching for it. So I hinted about this earlier, but we need to get really curious about how can we find that healthy dynamic as early in the session as possible from the beginning as possible. Now I know the reality is sometimes it takes us a while to get to the good stuff, but you want to be really aware that you don't begin drilling and strengthening the not good spot. So this is where it comes back to focusing on education and focusing on education. So I like to do a lot of things at the halt and at the walk where it's low impact. Um, I'm not building tons of muscles. I'm trying to, again, change the dynamic. How's my horse's response to my aids? You know, am I, you know, am I experimenting? Because maybe the just right balance is kind of right next to me, but I didn't look long, you know, I didn't search for it to try to find it. So when I'm teaching my students, um, I'll ask them often, in any moment, are you searching or are you enjoying? And you want to be in, in one of those two modes. You're either enjoying it and then go to neutral and like, yay, enjoy it, breathe, <laughs> acknowledge it, or search for it, meaning get curious and go, well, I wonder, you know, is, do I need a little more energy? Maybe I need to move the shoulder here or there. Like, what am I doing here? And so you're either searching to find something you can enjoy or you're enjoying it. And that might seem really obvious, like, yeah, Karen, duh. But here's the thing. I, I many times see students kind of in this limbo where they're riding around kind of nagging, forcing, holding it together, hoping. And so when I ask them in a moment, you know, are you searching? Are you enjoying? Are you enjoying that? They'll be like, well kind kind of you know so you know think of if i was teaching you as a student and you said you know karen how's this and i went eh, it's pretty pretty good for you <laughs> but so many times we ride around and 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 i know it's from students maybe not being confident and not being sure of themselves but they're they're giving their horse a message of eh. <laughs> you know They've asked their horse to do something. The horse kind of did something. And the horse is going, am I doing it right? And the, the student's like, I don't know. So don't get stuck in that limbo. Search, get curious. When you're searching, you might find a place that feels worse. And then that's great information because you go, oh, not that. Come back and just keep playing around. So you search, 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 and then you go, you know what? I've tried a few different levels of energy. I've tried changing a few things about how I'm sitting or where my horse is aligned. And you know what? Today, this is the best moment and I can now enjoy it. And so then when you do that, you end up finding that enjoyable moment sooner. And then when you are able to find that enjoyable moment, now you can consciously decide to spend more time in that moment, building up the stamina there and strengthening those muscles. So yes, the reality is 
we have to practice. And while we're gaining our skills, sometimes we're going to take the whole session just to get, you know, two minutes that feels reasonable. But keep track of it. Figure out what you did. If it's taking too long, go down a couple notches, make it easier, and see if you can find the easiest circumstance to set up the dynamic you want. And then you can always build back up from there. And we have to remember, you know, what are we doing? What is the object of dressage? And remember, it's about creating a happy athlete through harmonious education, creating a horse that's calm and loose and supple and flexible, but also confident, attentive, and keen, thus achieving perfect understanding with his rider. It's not about making things into a shape. It's not about making him do fancy movements. When you focus on healthy balance, healthy trust, and trying to find that stretchability of your horse, you're going to be achieving the only physical qualities even mentioned in the object of dressage. Looseness, suppleness, flexibility. You need to have those first. And then once you have those qualities, then the game is, let's see how far up the levels we can, we can take our happy athlete. So I hope that that helps you. Remember, don't force it. Listen to your horse and spend more time uh, enjoying than searching because everything affects posture. There are healthy and unhealthy ways of moving and you and your horse absolutely can change and can choose.